Alrighty, so I got a lot of questions around the way that we made up the tub, the kind of carbon fiber layups. I've had lots of comments about uh, the aluminium inserts and the core and so forth and so on. So I'm going to do a quick video, just highlight what we did and based on what we thought would be the best option for us. Uh, I'm not an island, there are engineers involved, there's some pretty smart guys uh, that have offered their services to, to us um, because of our relationships with them. Some of these guys worked in Formula One teams. So we aren't going to have the best all round piece. It's not going to happen. The DIY home workshop setup, you know, there's no ways we're going to get the same quality and finish and grade that you'd get out of an F1 team or out of any one of the big brands or big names um, in the world today. So we had to find a solution that was cost effective, that was efficient, that offered us the strength and offered us the weight saving to justify making the tub. And so there was a combination of things that we had to achieve to get to that, right? So I'm gonna uh, just show you quickly the layup of it. So if we start with this, so this suit is basically the thinnest section of the monocob. And if we run through it, what it is, is it's six layers of carbon uh, on each side, all right, with a 10 millimeter core in the middle. Now, the core was our biggest challenge, really, is to decide on what core to use. Originally, um, we were thinking of doing something to the effect of having room curable or you know room temperature curable uh, pre prep and that's when we started with this an al aluminium honeycomb core and this is similar to what they would use in an f1 car either this or nomex depending on whether it's a Delara or whether it's an f1 car so or an indy car for that matter so this is what we started with we bought we did samples, we did tests. Um, here is an example of one of those tests. So we laid it up, we did what we need to, and then we broke it to test it. Um, the weight is nothing, but the manufacturing process for us was very complicated. It wasn't as simple, and there were potential issues for us in doing it this way and the biggest potential issue that we carried was there's supposed to be a laminate or or a layer that almost acts as an adhesive between the carbon fiber skin that goes into the um, onto the core so if you take this piece um, with something like this carbon where these two meet in between there there's supposed to be like an adhesive layer now the problem for us was to find a room curable um, out of autoclave product to do that and we couldn't find anything number one and number two the solutions that we did find were just not cost effective um, it was starting to become ridiculous so our molds are made in such a way that they are uh, high temperature molds we can put them in an autoclave no problem but the cost to do that was exponential. So we had to find another solution, right? So we, we, we did all the testing, we made all the parts. I mean, this thing is just beautifully strong. And this is just one 280 gram layer of carbon, another 280 gram layer of carbon. And we tried our own ways of sandwiching them. And there was a relative level of success, but nothing that would give us the confidence to say, yeah, this is going to work. So then we ended up going up to plan, I would say probably D, it wasn't even plan A or D. This is the, the core that's in there. Uh, well, this is similar to what the core is. Uh, it's called my, my Foam 80. And basically it's an infusion core. And it, if you break off the blocks, the little blocks like this, and they've got these little channels where you run in back in, on each side of the, 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 the material, which allows the resin to flow through. And that is how we ended up with something like this. And this is now the piece inside of our core. We ran a slightly different core to this one. It's the same thing, but just uh, slightly stronger. It's a green core. 
and um, this is what we ended up with. So on the, on the construction of the monocoque, we wanted to infuse it all in one go. We didn't want to have to sit in situations where we fused the first half, then did the, the core, then did the other section, and then um, put it all together. So hence our reason for going with this final solution. Um, when I say it's the thinnest section, we've got some sections that are up to 10 layers thick with the Kevlar in the middle. And to give you an idea, so this is just a composite piece that we made up, but that is a, a 10 layer thick piece. So if you compare the two to each other, you can see the difference between a 6 layer and a 10 layer. So that's what it looks like. Then to quickly run through the aluminium inserts. So basically what we did is we took the inserts. We got the machine on the edges all around. We then cut grooves right across and drilled six mil holes in each core, in each corner. And what we wanted is we wanted the resin to be able to flow so we didn't sort of dry spots wherever the uh, inserts were. We didn't want sharp edges so that if there was an impact, they could rip through the uh, composite layer. So we definitely, definitely did <laughs> go and machine all the edges off machine the grooves, and even, in fact, we even burred the, the finish, so it had like a textured feeling to it. What I'll do is I'll get, a, I'll, I'll get another one made up and actually show you guys what it ended up looking like. Um, there's just so much process to manufacturing this monocoque that it was impossible for me to do all the work and to film every single part of the process. It just wasn't possible. Um, so that's what we did with that. Now, another thing, uh, galvanic corrosion, is everyone's carrying on about it, yes. So basically what galvanic corrosion is, is it's any part in carbon fiber is conduct, conductive. And so any part that has uh, any electricity or an electrical current running through it can create a disturbance between the carbon fiber and the aluminum. And what ends up happening is the aluminum starts to erode and create fractures inside of the um, composite in very simple form, right? So what we do is we run a 410 gram biaxial uh, fabric on each side of all the inserts. So if you look at our video, you'll see there's patches of white, and we have this oversized white piece that's probably 40 to 50 mil bigger than the insert, and we have the insert down, and then we have the other part on top of it, the other piece of fi uh, fiberglass. So that creates the barrier. But because it's so thick, 410, we're not going to have any extrusion into the carbon fiber. So don't worry guys, we did think about it and we did do it. So that's a basic uh, kind of uh, summary of what we have done and how we've done things. Um, there's lots of conversation around the direction that we put the fabric in, how we laid the fabric up. It wasn't a thumbstuck piece of kit. It was a process to understand the direction of impact uh, stress testing on the computer to understand what does it look like and so there was definitely compromise don't let's not fool ourselves here we we needed to have the best overall cutout per square meter without for the wastage so we found a solution that worked for us worked for our budget worked for the strength and yes what did it mean ultimately by doing all of this it meant that the monocog was heavier monocog is six to seven kilograms heavier than what we'd like it to be right so it's 41 kilograms for the monocog versus that 40, uh, sorry, the 32 kilogram barrier. That's where we wanted to be. So there were compromises in our design, but the one thing we never compromised on was safety. We added the extra elements of safety to ensure that, you know, even though we were maybe not having the ideal, even though we didn't have the ideal direction of, of fabric in one layer, the next layer we ensured that we had the overlaps done correctly, that 80 mil, wherever the joins were, that kind of thing. So guys, that's everything I can tell you about it and a little update to what we did and how we did it. See you next time.